subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update how to speak and how to listen for understanding let us now focus on body language and the art of questioning body language means communicating through the body posture gestures facial expressions tone of voice eye contact and even your muscle tension and breathing the way you look listen move and react to another person tells them more about how you're feeling than words alone ever can body language must be in sync with your words otherwise it will confuse the customer a positive body language is important in supporting your words and ensuring that your message is understood correctly as a sales executive you need to interpret customers nonverbal signals use nonverbal communication to improve your selling effectiveness remember it's hard to interpret nonverbal signals by observing a single gesture or body position you need to consider the pattern of signals a customer generates to interpret the person's feelings go through these next two slides to understand patterns of nonverbal communications Now that we have seen patterns of non-verbal communication, you know that to have positive body language, you must use cooperation signals to indicate a sincere interest in helping customers satisfy their needs. Avoid power signals. They intimidate the customer and makes them feel uncomfortable. Remember, nothing creates rapport like a smile. Make sure your smile is natural and comfortable and not a smirk or an exaggerated grin. Direct eye contact reflects sincerity. Glancing from side to side or at a wall has an opposite effect and staring can make them feel uncomfortable. Hand movements can also have a dramatic effect. Pointing a finger can be used to reinforce important points in the presentation however too many hand gestures will distract the attention of the customer good voice and speech habits are critical to avoid monotony in your presentation you should vary the rate and loudness of your speech simple messages may be delivered faster than more complex messages the art of questioning Questioning is fundamental to successful communication. We all ask and are asked questions when we engage in a conversation. Let us first understand that why do we need to ask questions? We ask questions to obtain information, to help maintain control of a conversation, to express an interest in something, to clarify a point, to explore something to test knowledge and to encourage further thought there are two types of questions open ended questions which give room for thought and elaborate answers for example tell me about yourself this is an example of an open ended question trying to get maximum information the second type are closed ended questions which usually result in a one word answer like a yes or no or some facts for example would you like to have a cup of coffee the answer will be either yes or no in the infographic below you can see the difference between open ended questions 
and closed-ended questions. Asking questions leads us to do effective probing with customers. Probing allows you to extract the exact information which is required. Most of the probing questions are of how, why and what category. However, this is not an exhaustive list. There are four varieties of probing questions. Open questions. Asking questions that are open reveals abundant information. Pause. Talking continuously is not a good idea. A pause can act as a probe, an indicator that says, tell me more. Paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is a type of probe to reconfirm and provide options. For example, Sir, if my understanding is right, you would love to own this product if the cost can be subsidized. The expected answer could be a yes or no in this case. And fourthly, reflective questions. A consolidated question that is asked for assurance. For example, Ma'am, you would like your vehicle to be picked up from ABC on the 21st day of June. You want the engine, tires and mirrors to be double checked and you want the delivery of your vehicle at your residence which is QQR. Hope that I have understood the request correctly. Let us now look at the 7 C's framework of effective communication. The 7 C's of communication are helpful. The 7 C's provide a checklist for making sure that your communication in every form that is one-on-one -on -one meetings, emails, presentations, etc. are clear to your customers and they get the message. Let us look at the seven C's one by one. Clear. When writing or speaking to someone, be clear about your goal or message. What is the purpose of this communication? Concise. When you're concise in your communication, you stick to the point and keep it brief. Read through the slide to understand this better. Concrete. When your message is concrete, then your audience has a clear picture of what you're telling them. Go through the example given below to understand this better. Correct. When your communication is correct, it fits your audience. Correct communication is also error-free communication. Read through this slide and understand the example. Coherent. When your communication is coherent, it is logical. All the points are connected and relevant to the main topic and the tone and the flow of text is consistent. Go through the slide to understand the example of coherency. Complete. Your message should be complete. Make sure the audience has everything they need to be informed and if applicable, take action. Read through the slide to understand this concept better. Courteous. Courteous communication is friendly, open and honest. There are no hidden insults or passive-aggressive tones. You keep your customer's viewpoint in mind and you're empathetic to their needs. For example, be aware of the importance of your voice and tone in conveying a friendly personality. In the next two slides, let us look at some tips for effective communication. For your communication to be effective, remember to stay focused, detect emotions, ask questions, do not interrupt and do not preempt. Recap the customer or speaker's version. Keep a notepad and pen ready to write down anything that seems important. Clear barriers of listening like external noises, colleagues giggling around, etc. 
and remember to use the seven C's of communication as a checklist for all your communication. By doing this, you'll stay clear, concise, correct, coherent, complete and courteous. Being with us, I hope you enjoyed this presentation on communication skills and all the best. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.